When I joined a company, the first thing to do is become familiarized with what was in the company and what we had and uh, what, what additional support we had. Airborne Rifle Company, that means a parachute company, we had uh, a headquarters, a weapons platoon, and then we had three rifle platoons. There were approximately 40 men in each of the rifle platoons and they were equipped with M16s and M79 grenade launchers. And in addition to that, each of the platoons had two M16 machine guns. Then the weapons platoon uh, was equipped basically with mortars, and we had two. We had 60 millimeter mortars, three of them, and three 81 millimeter mortars. Now the pros and cons, the 81 was much better mortar. Uh, had more firepower, had more destruction power, and was more heavy, <laughs> and it was tough to carry around. The 60 was easier to carry around, easy to do, but for example, if we were in double canopies, it was hard to get 60 through, they wouldn't get through at all. So the 81 was the best mortar for us to carry, but it was extremely heavy because it was not only the mortar itself, but the base plate. And so you had to have some strong guys to carry that. Now, in addition to that, behind us, the brigade had an artillery unit, and it was equipped with 105s. It could fire good, it could fire, it could put the rounds right on where you wanted to do. The unit that supported us was A batteries, three of the 319th artillery airborne. And whenever we had them, we were in good shape. They were great. At various times, there were other field units way back with eight inch or 155 artillery that could be called in. Each rifle platoon, there was a forward observer in there. And at my level, at the company, I had an artillery officer with me. And so when we got a problem or a jam, he would work with those three forward FOs, forward observers, and then he would relay the message and the requirement back to this artillery battery or to hire on how to bring in support or if we had TAC air above, he would control them and bring them in where they were needed. So at times, not all the time, but at times, we had massive backup support. At some times, the bad times, on June the 29th, we called in artillery support and they wouldn't fire it because our troops were too consolidated and they were afraid to fire it. We requested it anywhere. There's a term called danger close. We said, we are losing people, and at that time, uh, our company had 70% casualties. That's wounded or dead. We were in tough shape. The enemy outnumbered us. Our lead platoon of 40 had encountered over 200. And so we had called in artillery fire, not on us, but just about, and they refused to fire it because they thought our troops were too close and somebody back there made the decision we can't fire it, it's too close, even though we requested it. We eventually worked for that and we pushed the enemy back, but we had a lot of casualties. Anytime we made a, a helicopter assault, the slicks would go in one platoon at a time, and on either side of the slicks, there would be two gunships, Cobras, with guns and rockets on either side, and they would go in and prep the field before we land. They'd put rounds all over it, and then they would sweep out, hover around, and trail in behind us. Each lift went in. And so that's helicopter support, both from the Hueys that are firing with the troops in them, and these Cobras that are coming alongside. Sometimes we would call in uh, Air Force and we'd get usually 105s or, or things like that. We never had the Vietnamese Air Force, it was always Air Force, and, and they were good. But normally the artillery and, uh, was great, and when we had the air support, they were slick. It was good stuff.